What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about blood flow restriction training. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. Blood flow restriction is a new and hot form of training. But if you followed me for more than five minutes, you would know that I've been talking about this stuff for 15 years. So my first introduction to blood flow restriction training, it was actually referred to first as katsu training and then as occlusion training, and now the most common and scientifically accepted term is blood flow restriction training. But in 2007, I was reading one of the few meta-analyses on resistance training we have, and it kept referring to this thing called katsu training, which I didn't quite understand, actually seemed to have very impressive results. I went and looked it up, and it looked like basically they were using like these specialized blood pressure cuffs to restrict blood flow, not the blood flow to the limb, but the venous return from the limb. And they used a very specific pressure to do this. It's actually interesting how this started. This started in Japan, and the guy who invented it uh, was at a funeral, I believe, and he was sitting cross-legged, and noticed that his leg going numb and the blood pooling was similar to the effect he felt when he would resistance train and started like trying to emulate that during training and that's how this came about. I looked into how much getting a katsu cuff would cost me and at the time I was a poor grad student and a katsu cuff was $10,000. So I started playing around with different methodologies. Like first I tried using a resistance band to you know wrap my leg. That didn't really seem to do much. And then uh, I found these Harbinger like Velcro belts. That seemed to work a little bit better, but I really kind of like didn't keep pursuing it because it seemed kind of cumbersome the way I was doing it. And then one day I was uh, preparing for a powerlifting meet. This is back in like 2008, I want to say. And I was wrapping my knees. And I noticed that when I wrapped my knees, my calf would get like this crazy pump. And I was like, huh. I wonder if knee wraps would work. So I started wrapping the top of my thigh and found that the pump that that produced using the blood flow restriction protocol was crazy intense. And one of the first times I was actually doing it, I was on a leg extension in Gold's Gym in Champaign, Illinois. And there was an intern there for the exercise physiology lab, uh, Kim Huey's lab actually, named Jeremy Linicky. And I knew Jeremy from the bodybuilding.com message boards and we had hung out a few times and whatnot. And he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, it's this thing called occlusion training. Check it out. And I was try trying to explain how it worked and what I was doing. He was like, that sounds stupid. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I mean, the pump is crazy. So I had him try it. And apparently he loved it because he went off and published a ton of research studies on BFR and is now pretty much one of the world's leading researchers on blood flow restriction training. Yes, humble brag, I'm taking credit for that. Sorry, Jeremy. How does blood flow restriction training work? Whenever you resistance train, you do create a little bit of natural blood flow restriction. So as you're like lifting a weight or pumping blood into a muscle, the pumping action kind of causes a pooling of that blood and restricting the venous return of that blood. What they found is over the course of time, I'm gonna to cut to the end here so you guys get the data. Blood flow restriction training doesn't appear to be any better than normal resistance training. What it does appear to do is allow you to use really light loads and get the same benefits as using heavy loads. So why would this be useful? Because some people have said, well, you can take a light load to like 30 reps, right? And create muscular hypertrophy just as much as you do with a heavy load. So why would you use blood flow restriction training? Basically because BFR will get you there faster, okay? So it'll get you closer to failure faster with a lighter load. So if you're somebody who's nursing an injury, or maybe you're traveling and you don't have access to your normal weights, like you're at a hotel gym with really light weights, well now you can take those light weights and instead of having to do you know, 50, 60, 70 reps or something to get close to failure, which is probably not gonna be as beneficial, you can use BFR so where you don't have to do quite so many reps because it's gonna accelerate your progression to failure. Previously we were thinking, oh, you know, maybe it works through growth hormone, whatever. It doesn't appear to work through any of that. Uh, the mechanism is just normal resistance training, but also possibly metabolic byproduct accumulation because you're restricting the venous return of blood from a limb. Perhaps some of those growth factors and metabolites are having an ability to pool in that area, interact with receptors longer, and create uh, hypertrophy through that mechanism as well. Now, again, 
it doesn't produce more hypertrophy. It just gets you to failure point with a very light load quicker. So it can be a nice tool for people who are either nursing injuries or who only have access to really light loads. Like during the pandemic, this has been great for people who are training at home. But the one thing I will say is there is interesting data showing that if you put somebody on bed rest, for example, they lose a lot of muscle mass. But if you intermittently apply blood flow restriction, they lose less muscle mass. And in people who are untrained, if you have them walk, they don't gain muscle mass. But if you have them walk with blood flow restriction, they actually increase their muscle mass slightly. I'm aware of no other form of training where walking produces increases in muscle mass. Now, if you are somebody who's been resistance training for like two years, applying BFR cuffs and walking is not gonna produce hypertrophy, okay? But if you're untrained, it may. I don't think it's a must do. I don't think it's the great solution to everything. And it's certainly not superior to regular resistance training, but it is a nice useful tool to have. Now, how do I recommend executing BFR? Typically what's recommended is using a cuff. You can use multiple different things. For lower body, I just use knee wraps and I wrap at about a seven out of 10. So if 10 is as tight as I can possibly wrap, I wrap at about a seven out of 10. For arms, I recommend uh, quick release medical tourniquets. They're pretty cheap, simple, and you can buy them on Amazon for like 10 bucks a pop. Some people have created BFR apparatus, which are basically just fancy knee sleeves. There was one company that created like a Bluetooth controlled where you could adjust the tightness like with your, with your Bluetooth. That seems to be nice, but probably overkill when you can just go whoosh. So then how do you execute the sets? Well, you probably don't need to do anything fancy. Some of the protocols used in the literature are, for example, using like 20 to 30% of a one rep max on an exercise, doing 20 to 30 reps on the first set, and then taking the next three sets to failure, resting about 30 to 45 seconds in between each of those sets. So it's like a BFR cluster. And yes, they keep the reps on during the entire course of the set. Uh, during that time. Another protocol is doing like 50% of a one rep max, first set 15 reps, and then the next three sets to failure, resting like 45 to 60 seconds between sets. There's probably multiple different ways to do it, but essentially you're just stuffing a lot of volume into a short period of time and getting quite a bit of failure training in, in a short period of time with light loads uh, that would normally take you much higher reps to get to. Now, some people have asked, isn't this style of training dangerous? Uh, there's no evidence it's dangerous. In fact, it tends to produce less muscle damage than other forms. And some people have asked about like tissue becoming necrotic or that sort of thing. You're not, if you're wrapping so tight to actually cause that, you're wrapping way too tight. But it would be so incredibly painful. There's very few humans who would be able to tolerate that amount of pain for tissue to actually become necrotic within a few minutes. It's, it's just very unlikely to happen. It appears to be very, very safe, very effective, but not more effective than normal training. If you guys are interested in how to implement this, the BioLane Workout Builder does have programs that implement blood flow restriction training. You can click the link in the description to sign up for that. If you guys like this video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you next week.